And you see, when believers start compromising the Word of God, it's one thing for ungodly folks. We can't blame them. That's the way they are. But when believers start compromising their conviction, something is wrong and we're going to lose the power of God in our churches today. Amen. Let me share the second thing. Not only is there compromise instead of conviction, but number two, there's complacency instead of correction. There is complacency instead of correction. If you notice in our text, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the most important word in that verse is the very first word. It's a short word. It's called if. Everybody say if. 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 God says if. Solomon is saying a prayer here in the end of his prayer. God answers him. He said if. If what? If my people. If. Let me tell you something. If Adam wouldn't have sinned in the Garden of Eden, he wouldn't have been banned from there. If Solomon would not have turned his back on God, he wouldn't have lived most of his life in misery. If David, King David, would have gone to war when, when he was supposed to go to war, he would have never went to the rooftop and laid eyes on Bathsheba. If Peter, the Apostle Peter, would have listened to God instead of shooting off his mouth all the time, he would have saved himself a lot of heartaches. Yeah. If, 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 if America would wise up and stop compromising their conviction and get out of this complacency and start correcting, if we might see something done. Amen. Notice Acts on your handouts there. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. These all continued in one accord and prayed in supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with the brethren. Skip on down to Acts chapter 2, verse 5 and through 7. And there dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And then, now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? Let me stop right here for a minute. Because what I want you to see is the early church in Jerusalem. In verse chapter 1, verse 14, what we see first was they was a praying church. This church in Jerusalem probably had 120 members at the time. And they were a praying church. And God, this is called the day of Pentecost. And God called Peter to preach in his own language, the Galilean. And the Bible says that they're devout men from every nation. In other words, there were representatives. There were ambassadors from every nation. And they were to come and they were going to hear the Word of God spoken to them. And they were supposed to take that message back to their country. Some of them said, I believe. Some of them got saved. In fact, the Bible says that 3,000 were added onto the church of Jerusalem. But it also said others laughed and made fun of them. And said, oh, these people are, are filled with wine. They're drunk. They're insane. You see, there's complacency instead of conviction. What you've seen in the early church at Jerusalem, you've seen three things that, that was highly visible. Number one, there was a praying church. They got out of their comfort zone. They were a praying church. And I mean, they poured their heart out to God. Second thing, there was a witness in church. They cared about lost souls. If you read uh, on through Acts chapter 2, you find that 3,000 souls were saved. The church multiplied. The church doubled. And there probably had 16,000 people there. By some great revival that just started with 100 some people. Right. It was a praying church. And it was a witness in church. And the other thing, they was in one accord. They all believed the same message. And they studied together. And they prayed together. And they fellowshiped together. You see, when there was an error, when there was problems, it was corrected. Amen. What has happened today is people don't want to get out of their comfort zone. People want to further their careers. They want to further their education. And these are good things. But we need to further our spiritual life too. We need to come out of that comfort zone and get out of that complacency. We need to be a praying church. We need to be an evangelistic church. We need to be a church that's in one 
of one accord. We need to be a church that loves the Lord Jesus Christ with all our hearts. You see what has happened to our churches today? They have become social clubs to a certain extent. They have become cliques. Why do you come to church? Well, I like the music. I like Southern Gospel music. I like contemporary music. I like the I like the band music. I like the praise music. I like the drums. I like the guitar. I like that's the reason why I come to church. Well, why do you come to church? I come to church because I just like the people and and I like that and 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 that's the reason why I come. Why do you come to church? I like girls. All the good looking men go to that time where I'm going. And the truth is, we come complacent and, and, and we need to understand what church is all about and the purpose of the church. And we need to get out of that comfort zone and understand God didn't call us to, to sit and do nothing. He called us to stand and be accounted for. Amen. Get out of the comfort zone. You see, we wonder why the power of God has left us today. Because there's compromise instead of conviction. There's complacency instead of correction. And then let me share the third thing with you. Number three, there's confusion instead of contentment. You have your Bible or you can just turn in your handouts there. Notice 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let me real quickly give you a little background on this. The Apostle Paul is writing to a young pastor named Timothy. Timothy is the pastor of Ephesus. If you look in your Bible, Ephesians. That's right. Okay? He says, I charge thee. In other words, I challenge thee, Timothy, before God. Don't just do it for me. I challenge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick. The quick means the people that are living when Christ comes back. And the dead at His appearing in His kingdom. Now watch what he says. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, reprove, rebuke, exhort, or encourage with all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. We might have to change the method from time to time, but the message should never change. Amen, bro. Amen. And what has happened today is we have seen so much confusion in the local church today that people leave confused. What is the purpose of the local church today? Whether it's Westside or any other church. What is the purpose? The purpose, number one, is that we come together and we worship God. Number one, before you think of it, we worship God. Amen. We get our batteries charged. We hurt when other people hurt. We cry when other people cry. We rejoice when other people rejoice. We don't laugh at what's wrong, but we weep when it's wrong. And we and we uh, uh, celebrate when things are right. right. But we are here, number one and foremost, to worship God. The second thing we're supposed to do is to love others. Right. The Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself. We're supposed to love others no matter what they're dressed like, what they look like, who they are, where they're from. We're supposed to witness and love others. Right. Unconditionally. Amen. 